Yeah, no doubt, Robert. Cer certainly we're going to get fired up about tonight. McCullers against Syndergaard. Citizens Bank Park is going to be it's going to be crazy. Yeah. OK, bottom line. Fans better be. Hide your women and tr children for <laughs> this one. It's going to get ugly. McCullers is the guy to handle the moment, though. But I wanted to go back over Friday and Saturday's game and, and dive in on a couple of things that I saw that were interesting. OK, it's very easy to manage from the couch. But I get to do that reluctantly right now and just sit there and kind of pick apart the way guys do certain things. By the way, Rob Thompson is on it. There's a couple of suggestions I would make to him regarding Edmondo Sosa and Stott and Bohm a little bit later in this tape. But as far as bullpen usage, we could get in. I, I, I thought in game one, we're going to go right into the different usages of bullpen. When he came out, pause this. That's fifth inning right there. And I'm saying, man, he's got Alvarado. He's going for it. Why did he say that? We'll get to sound. But he basically was saying, we had battled so far back into this game, the momentum was ours, and I didn't want to give it back. But I love this. Alvarado, we got a chance to win this ball game. Run it. I'm bringing my best guy out. This guy is throwing 100 miles an hour. Al Leiter was on here last week talking about no one hits him. He knew he had Ranger Suarez late. Strikes out Bregman. Take a listen to this awesome interview with Ken. Rob, why go to Alvarado in that spot? What's your thinking? I just think that we got the momentum back. We're scoring, you know, the three and the two and got it tied. And I didn't want to, I didn't want them to do anything right there. So he's our, our he's our best guy on those left handers in that spot. So that's why I went there. And then you bring out Ranger Suarez. OK, dominant in the seventh inning and we'll push him back. Game three starter becomes your game four starter. What I loved about Rob Thompson, he's been doing this all year and you can pause this real quick. He knows who his weapons are and he knows who his weapons are not. If he's got a chance to win a game, you're going to see the big boys. And if he's got a chance to maybe punt the game and save some arms like he did in game two, you're going to see different bullpen guys deployed. All right. He has to take that measure because he doesn't have the depth with which Dusty Baker has to work with. OK, let's keep going. There's some interesting things. Dusty's been we've not been critical of him, but there have been moments in the postseason that he's left people shaking their head a little bit with bullpen. OK, pause this. You have Brian Abreu warming up right here. Mm -hmm. It's 5-3 with Burlander. I'm sitting on the couch. You're going through social media. Everybody's managing the game and everybody's saying take him out. Dusty, I'm with you, man. I'm not taking out the guy who's going to win the AL Cy Young. I'm not walking to the mound in a 5-3 game and taking him out. So I completely understood that. Keep it going. Some of the things I started to wonder about, and JT Real Muto ends up tying this game. My thing is, is as this progresses, pause this, as this se a series progresses, this is his 32nd pitch from Brian Abreu. You are giving guys Abreu's, Montero's, different guys, you're giving the meat of their order constant looks at these guys. So when it turns, if this series goes six games, seven games, which we expect, I'm going to have a hard time believing that Bryce Harper in the middle of this order ain't going to do eventual damage off Mr. Abreu and Mr. Montero. Get into this. That's the only thing that concerns me. In that situation, pause again, just kind of managing the game from home. You're going to bring Hector Neris in now with the bases loaded, put a ton of stress on Maldonado, a guy who throws a ton of splits, when we could have had Neris in right there to kind of get a feel for it with an open base with Bryce Harper. Keep it going. So just a couple moments to kind of manage him from the couch, which is super easy. He ends up making an awesome pitch to Nick Castellanos, who's super aggressive. Keep it going. This was the pitch of the game for me, even though Run that back real quick. Mm. How do you hit this? Ryan Presley has been on one this postseason. He's incorporated this dirty changeup. He threw 3 2 to Kyle Schwarber. I just wanted to put that in the tape. Mr. Montero, though, in two games, and I know they had an off day yesterday, and you're going to expend this bullet, but in two games, has thrown two and two thirds innings. And it's four seam cheese to Bryce Harper. And what I'm saying is going to kind of stand true for what I believe with Brian Abreu. If you keep showing these Philly hitters middle cut heaters with these guys consistently and they get looks time and time again, eventually as this series progresses, somebody's going to clip one. Okay. Now let's get into Alex Bregman. 
I don't know if the book is to consistently go in on this guy, but we're going to go through some of his ABs right here because it's cutter slider away, heater in off, heater in off. Run that back for me real quick. He's on this. I know, I know it's a ground out. Got it. Run it. He's on that pitch. That's just barrel accuracy right there. That's a missile up the middle. Okay. And it didn't deviate. We're going to keep trying to go in on him for reasons I don't totally understand. Pause this real quick. He saw that ball big. Can you bring up his slug heat map for me? Oh, you're going to bring up walk chase rate? Bring up the other one. That's right. We'll get back to this one. Bring this up. Okay. So this is him from the catcher's perspective. I don't know why the book is to want to rush him in so much. I mean, because if you miss, it's getting pounded. Okay? Yeah, you could go in up, but I bet you in up on everybody sitting at a buck fifty to two hundred. So let's get back into the tape. He doesn't walk. He's got it an eye for days. He doesn't deviate his approach or what he's trying to do. But the book here, obviously, is to go in a lot and to open up away. But we've seen this tried before, to go in, in, in. And he barreled that, by the way, too. So it's a double play. He's 0 for 2, but he's on him. If you're watching a game at home, he is on him. And the last time someone tried to keep going in was ALCS game 2, and Severino didn't get it back. But, but the exit velocity was not. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, he's trying to go in again, and he is spitting on this. So let me hear, pause this, let me hear what his philosophy is on hitting. I think this is some of the best sound we have. Run it, Lucas. Well, for me personally, I never, ever think about rotation at all. I think I have two, two flashlights right here on my hip pointing that way. I have them on my shoulders, on my hips, on everything, my feet. And all I am trying to do, the only thing I look for is when I load, to have my hands travel high across my chest forward like this, the knob of the bat get out there past the inside part of the baseball. All right, so pause this. So real quick, they've tried to come in consistently to get him off the outer half of the blade. But if he's thinking flashlights this way, flashlights this way, I mean, he is on he is on it. He's spitting. There's not much there. So he hasn't come off what he hunts, middle of the plate. He doesn't walk. He's got total control of the strike zone. You make one mistake, run it. Got him. So I know he came to the plate 0 for 2 with a ground into double play, but at no point did he not feel like that was eventually going to happen if he missed out over. This is one of the best postseason hitters of all time. Doing it again, just completely in the zone. Okay, real quick on Bryson Stott. I'm in on this guy. Pause this real quick. I know Edmundo Sosa came over and the matchup say, hey, maybe we get him in against the lefty. I I'm riding and dying with Bohm and Stott on the left side of my infield. I don't need to see Sosa come in for Bohm for defense late. I don't need to see Stott not get every A bay. All right, that, I'll say that. They, they're the left side of your infield for the foreseeable future unless you go out and sign a Trey Turner and move Stott over to second base. But those two dudes are going to play for the next decade for you. And this guy has got a slow heartbeat run this. He has had monster. His numbers aren't great in the postseason, but anybody who truly dives in on the game, he has had some big hits for this team, and he controls every at bat. He makes everything a 10 pitch AB. He's spoiling guys good stuff in the zone and he plays like he's been there for 10 years and you want to trust the guy in that situation. I'm going to take you back. This is UNLV. This guy has got a swag on him. OK, he changed a little bit. Obviously, you can't hit like this. Get out front. So he's made some necessary changes in the big leagues, but I'm going to run you through this AB and then I'm going to get out of this. This is Montero. This is a pinch hit coming in. There is no nervy to this guy. There's nothing. This is a guy who expects to be great in big moments. He's down 0-2, and he's going to work this AB and work a walk against Montero, who's just going to keep elevating heaters. He's going to keep fouling them off, just battling in the zone. Like Robert said, he just looks really, 
really sure of himself. 12 pitch AB against Verlander in game one. E exactly. And that Him was and part Ranger of the rally. Suarez are kind of like these two young guys on the Phillies that I expect Ranger to be great in game four. And I expect Stott to have a big hit as this series progresses. Because to be able to control the strike zone like this, I'm just going to work a walk and keep it moving. So a couple things I noticed on the weekend, kind of the way Dusty's shown the bullpen a lot to the Phillies hitters, the way Thompson kind of deploys his, Bregman's a stud, and Stott, Stott's a nice player. Yeah.